Scott Spritzer and Doug Upstone here. We are DocSports.com. And yes, it is only the first week of May, but football is king, specifically the NFL, and it sure has been the last couple of weeks. All the talk since draft day has been about Aaron Rodgers, or 95% of the talk, at least since draft day, has been on whether or not Aaron Rodgers is going to ever take another snap for the Green Bay Packers as their quarterback. And we hear that he is looking at moving or retiring or sitting out a year. Now, here's the thing, though. As of now, and, you know, again, we're talking uh, six days into May, we still haven't heard anything from the mouth of Aaron Rodgers. We just hear reports about what Aaron Rodgers is thinking. So we're going to tell everybody in the first week of May how this has affected the betting on the Green Bay Packers, the teams in their division, all that kind of good stuff. The Denver Broncos, by the way. Uh, So... And, and again, this is king. Every radio show I do, Doug, they don't want to know what I like in baseball. They don't know. They want to know what I think about the NBA. The question every single day to lead off every radio show I've done for the past week, what's going to happen if Aaron Rodgers doesn't play for Green Bay? What are the odds going to be? I wanted to tell you real quick here before we jump into all that. Uh, I wanted to say thanks to uh, William Hill Sportsbooks. They emailed me uh, where the tickets are right now to win the, uh, this upcoming year's Super Bowl and where the money is. And as far as tickets are concerned, Tampa Bay, as you would have expected, uh, the most popular uh, bet as far as tickets, they are getting 9% of the tickets thus far. They're seven to one at William Hill Sportsbooks. San Francisco, they're looking for a bounce back there. San Francisco, Cleveland, and Kansas City getting 7% of the bets each as far as tickets. Green Bay at 10 to one has received 6%. They are no longer going to be on basically anywhere. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, the Rams are 10 to 1, 6%. Buffalo, 5%. They're 11 to 1. And I just wanted to let everybody know who's watching this in and around Vegas or maybe in Northern California, the Las Vegas Raiders are next, believe it or not, at 4% of the tickets, but they are 35 to 1. Top team as far as money wagered, total dollars, Tampa Bay, 17% of the money. Chiefs, 11%. San Francisco and Cleveland, both 8% of the money thus far, Doug. Mm-hmm. So, that's the uh, status of where William Hill sits with all these bets for the upcoming Super Bowl. But I'm going to tell you quickly that when you look at the Green Bay Packers and what has happened to their odds since Aaron Rodgers, all this news has been coming out of this soap opera, they've gone from 11 to 1 to 17 to 1. They've gone from an implied probability to win the Super Bowl of 5.6% all the way down to about, oh gosh, well, right now it's 5.6%. It was greater than that before this adjustment. At 17 to one, Doug, if you think Aaron Rodgers is gonna play, there's a little bit of value there. <laughs> yeah, there is, but that, there's the question, right? Okay, and uh, it, it really seems like odds makers are just hedging their bets. Um, you know, no, Nobody knows, okay? And quite the more you read, I don't think Aaron Rodgers knows. Okay, now he's angry and there's people uh, supposedly that know him well saying when he sets his mind to something, uh, there's like a 5% chance he's going to change it. Okay, Mm -hmm. he's very committed to what he believes. Now, today, uh, John Kuhn came out, the former fullback for the Packers, and he's a little more optimistic. Uh, He thinks that things can be worked out. He says he understands his frustration, everything else. Um, You know, there's a lot of ways to look at this, Scott, but here's one thing that's, you know, that's undeniable. In 20, I believe it was 2017, when he was hurt and Brett Hundley had to play, the Packers went 7-8-1. and In 2013, when he was hurt, and I think he played just nine games that year, the Packers ended up eight, seven, and one only because, or primarily because Matt Flynn had a career seven games. Okay. And that's what saved their season. They didn't make the playoffs and he got paid a lot of money, including by the Raiders to do absolutely nothing. Uh, But you know, the, he's the, he's the whole key, but I'm not going to go overboard Scott on Denver. All right. Everybody, you know, oh, look at Denver. He's got all those young players. He's all this and he's all that. Well, you know, those young players still have to develop. He's got to work with a different offensive coordinator. It's going to be a different offense. And we saw how badly Tom Brady struggled for a half a season in Tampa Bay. Um, so that, that's a different. And they added veteran players, by the way, too. Tampa Bay did. And that Denver defense, everybody's raving about that Denver defense. OK, well, guess what? Uh, the last three years, total defense, 12th. Uh, 19th, and I believe 22nd. 
are the numbers that I can remember. I might have the order wrong on that at, at the moment, but those are the numbers. Those are good in some cases and average to below. So I'm going to hold off on getting excited about Denver if they get Aaron Rodgers. Is it a playoff capable team? No question. He's going to add that much. But Super Bowl? Eh, not me, Scott. What do you think? Well, he's got to go up against teams like Kansas City and Baltimore for one thing. You know, obviously Kansas City within his own division if he goes to Denver. Uh, but I, I actually like this defense. And one of the reasons I like it, now is it top four? No. Is it top 10? I think it will be in, in a lot of metrics that I like. Uh, for one thing, they didn't have much of an offense to protect that defense. And I keep thinking, boy, if they got an offense led by Aaron Rodgers, then they've got a good shot to have better defensive numbers because they're not going to get stuck in tough situations as much. Uh, the wide receiving core in 2020 in the draft last year, they went all for wide receiver. And they've got a, one of the deepest wide receiver cores now in the NFL. So Rodgers has not played with a wide receiver core this deep with this much talent in a long, long time. That's one of his problems. You know, they go out and they get Jordan Love in 2020 instead of bolstering the receiving position. So I do like that. As far as the books, you know, they got to get out in front of this. So what did they do? Well, the Denver Broncos were the 24th or had the 24th best odds to win the upcoming Super Bowl. They were 60 to one. When all the talk began about Aaron Rodgers potentially ending up in Denver, they had to adjust. They are now the ninth favorite to win the Super Bowl from 24th to ninth. They've gone from 60 to one to around 20 to one in some books. The roster's pretty decent, talented young wide receivers. I think the defense will be the best that he's played with if he goes there in quite some time. Uh, I did mention the Packers went from 11 to one to 17 to one, but I'll tell you what, if he does leave Green Bay, whether it be for another team, take a year off or retire, that Green Bay, I tell you, their projected wins probably drop by three games from 10 down to seven. And remember, there's 17 games this year. Their implied chances of winning the Super Bowl would be about 1% if he does decide to leave this organization. And obviously that affects everybody else in the division too. Uh, listen, there was a math guy who did a bunch of work and I was reading his article in a couple of days ago. And he basically says Green Bay's chances of winning just the division go from 60% with Rodgers to about 20% without Aaron Rodgers. And I looked at the schedule, I'm like, holy cow, if he plays for Green Bay, it ain't that easy. I mean, he's got home games against, obviously, the, the division, the Bears, the Lions, the Vikings, which are also road games. But then at home, he's got the Browns, 10 wins over under total. The Rams, 10 and a half. Steelers, eight and a half. Seahawks, nine and a half. Washington, eight. So I just mentioned out of those non-divisional home games, only one is expected to win less than half their games. And Washington's only a game away from winning more than half their games. On the road, besides the division, Cardinals, Ravens, 11 wins total. Bengals should be able to beat the Bengals, you would think, but you don't know without uh, without uh, Rodgers. Saints, Niners, 10 and a half wins. Kansas City Chiefs, 12 wins. That's a tough slate, even if Rodgers is there, Doug. So when I look at that, I think this team's gonna have a rough time winning seven games if he's not at quarterback. What are your thoughts? Oh, I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, this is something uh, that I've had discussion with people is that, you know, when Rodgers goes, that's it. I mean, yeah. you could figure at least a decade for the Packers gone. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if they've in that decade, if they had three winning seasons just in general. Sure. Uh, go back to the 40. You have two Hall of Fame quarterbacks back to back. OK, how the 49ers do once Steve Young left. OK, yeah. uh, the only other pair of Hall of Fame quarterbacks, now this goes way back the, the, to the 60s, and they won one championship, was Norm Van Brocklin and Sonny Jurgensen. okay? Mm -hmm. uh, what happened, to, what happens is Philadelphia's organization after that, okay? I mean, it, you know, you, you have that sort of luck, you're going to pay the price, and that's what's going to happen. The Packers are going to just disappear off the radar, and if, I, I mean, if, if Rodgers is not there, I'd say seven is the high point. Okay, yeah. of the win total. I'm more inclined to say, even with 17 games, I'm inclined to say five or six. So yeah, I, it's it's over. <laughs> I mean, I don't yeah, know. How I, to I say look it. at the schedule. I just mentioned the teams that are playing at home: Bears, Lions, Vikings, Browns, Rams, Steelers, Seahawks, Washington. Without Rodgers, are they favored in any more than one game before things get going this season at home? I mean, they could probably be favored against the Lions just because. 
But are they favored over anybody else at home on that schedule I just mentioned? If you're making lines before the season begins, I, I'm not so sure. Maybe two times tops even at home. So it, it's tough. I think you're right at seven is if everything goes well, if he's not there. As far as Denver, I do think they have a shot at a 10 win season. Uh, you know, their, their schedule is not overly difficult at home besides Baltimore, besides Kansas City. Uh, they do get Cincy, Philly, the Jets. Those are all teams with wins totals of six and a half. Washington, eight wins. Detroit, five wins. And then on the road, it's a little bit tougher because you do have Cleveland. You do have the divisional games against KC, the Chargers, the Raiders, Dallas, Cleveland. Those are all tough. But you also get Jacksonville thrown in the mix also. I'm going to say if he goes to Denver, Doug, he wins 10 games. If he stays at Green Bay, he wins 10 games. If he doesn't go to Denver, Denver will be less than 500. If he doesn't go to Green Bay, they win. If he doesn't stay at Green Bay, they win six games. My final thoughts. Yep. Sounds like you're agreeing. I, <laughs> All I, right, I, man. He's going to check it out. Also, that, I want to let everybody know about the $60 the free help, by the way which is good. We're doing this in baseball season, but everybody's talking NFL. $60 free account. Click on that link below the video. Get yourself set up for that free account, and then you can use those free 60 bucks on Doug's daily packages, mine or anybody else at DocSports.com. Let's have a terrific weekend. Let's put him in the win column. He's Doug Upstone. I'm Scott Spritzer. We are DocSports.com.